Probably nobody likes to have to manage service accounts, but you can make things a little bit easier on yourself. Let's hop into PowerShell, and let's say that I want to change a particular service account on three or four different computers in my environment. I'm going to create their names in a list. We'll just call it names.txt. A simple text file, uh, we'll just pop in a couple of different things here, localhost, server 2, and maybe SQL Server 7. We'll save that. It's easy to read that into the shell using the get content commandlet. And using that, you can then combine it with Windows management instrumentation to affect change on the services. Now brace yourself because this syntax gets a little bit ugly. I'm going to start with a get WMI object call and I want to retrieve the Win32 service class. You'll need to provide the name of the service you want to change. Because it's a harmless one, and I just want to demonstrate this, I'm going to use the bits service. Easy enough for me to change that back because it just logs on as local service. Once you get all those, you'll have to pipe it to for each object. And then for each one, you'll execute the change method. The change method can change a number of different things, and the first seven of those we don't care about, so we're just going to pass null. Then you can give it the password that you want, and then you're done. The trick with this, and to really make it useful, is to not do this to the local computer, which is all this command would do, but to do it to all of those computers listed in my text file, which I can accomplish by providing computer name and then a parenthetical expression that reads in those computer names. So this gets read in first, passed to this, causing it to retrieve the services from those computers. Whatever services get brought back are piped over to for each object, and their change method is executed. Now I made sure that two of those server names are no good because I want you to see what happens when it doesn't work. We'll just hit enter on that and <sighs> always the difficulty. Got to make sure you get all that syntax in there. Return value of zero is what you're looking for. That's the good news. That means that particular server was hit, it was changed, everything worked fine. Now I haven't made this complex enough to really do any kind of logging and now I'm going to start timing out. Uh, and it, unfortunately, the error message is not actually going to tell me what computer it timed out on. I've just kind of got to know what order they came in to begin with. So it's it's not the perfectest tool, and you should could certainly build it into something a little bit more complicated that maybe provided some logging and error handling. But this is the basis for, for building something that at least lets you get your hands around this whole service password changing thing.